Welcome to another episode of the Drift Car Build-Off presented by Spec Clutch and Coyo Rad. Today we're installing a race seat and steering wheel as well as gutting the back seat to prep it for a roll bar. Since we've already got this all set up for you for a nice little show and tell, I'll give you a quick rundown of what we have. This is a Momo Super Cup. And for those of you who watch the Mullet Mustang series, you'll recognize this seat. This is a hand-me-down from that. The other one's in our uh, K-Swap Civic. Pete also ordered a steering wheel and hub from Momo, which we'll show you more of momentarily. And I ordered up this Bray Krause uh, seat mounting bracket, which is specifically designed to mount a racing seat in an E46 using the factory sliders. So we'll get into the details on all this momentarily, but first, I think we gotta pull that driver's seat out of there. It looks like we have hit the jackpot with all of the money under this seat. Wow, Ooh. I think this may be our biggest score yet. This is like four, 20, 40, 50, 75 here. And I mean, this is American. Look at that. Time that for a toll eight. run, Peter. That's right. That's so good. that is a haul and a half there. I think there's some very old what chocolate. That? Chocolate thing? Yes, this is incredibly old. Wow. This is like the center. It's all, almost like marshmallowy, but yes. Ooh, yeah, that's gross. Not great, but... Uh, you know Moog would have eaten that, Peter. I, I know. I, I'm definitely not going to eat that. I fear for my life. We have a free sandwich from Monopoly, nice. which is really awesome. Fortunately, it expires 2014. <laughs> so we're a little late on that. And what is this? Oh, oh, and a baked muffin. Man, this guy did not cash in on these great McDonald's prizes. So now that the seat is out here, I think it's time we try to fit up our Momo. As you can see, we've got our Bray Krause mounting brackets bolted to the sliders. These are not the sliders out of our cabriolet though. These are not compatible with the sliders in the cabriolet. It's sort of a unique setup for reasons we'll explain in a minute, but to make these work, you need sliders, either powered or manual sliders out of any other E46. So coupe, sedan, wagon, all good to go. Cabriolet won't work with these. So we got these out of what we think is an E46, for, uh, E46 sedan. And the reason we know that I'll explain in a minute, but these are powered sliders because we thought a racing seat on a powered slider? I know. It doesn't get any cooler than that. Come on, and in a BMW, it just seems right. It's baller factor through the roof, and actually it's very practical too when you think about how hard it is to get in and out of a car with a bucket seat bolted to the floor or on a, like a janky slider. You rarely have enough room. It's always kind of like crawling in and out. With this, with just the push of a button, which will mount right here, we'll be able to go back, get out comfortably, then slide it up. Pete and I are of like slightly different heights or lengths in our legs, so we want to fine tune that. This is all good stuff. The switch to move the seat forward and back actually uses an E30 window switch, which I forgot to buy, but we'll pick one up and it uh, mounts in this little rectangle here that they provide on the bracket. Then there's a little bit of wiring to do to integrate it with a factory harness. Pete's done a little thinking on that already because we had to figure out how to move the slider forward and backward to get the bolts up through the bottom of the slider into these brackets. So he found the, uh, the power switches here. We just hooked it up to a battery and we could move it forward and backward to do that. And we've also picked up their optional uh, lap belt mounting points for a harness system. So as you can see, this hook here is for the lap belt to snap on on this side. And on the other side, we have the factory seal seat belt, which you would be able to use if you had a coupe or a wagon or a sedan. But because our Cabrio uh, seat belts are on the OE seats, we're no longer gonna be able to use this. So we're gonna ditch this but you can see that there's also a Bray Krause pickup point here for the lap belts on this side. So we'll go to a full-time uh, DOT spec four-point harness system in the car. Just like that, the Momo Super Cup is bolted up. There was a little fiddling involved. We put the, the thinnest of the washers in between the seat and the side mounts, and we did some work positioning it at the right angle. Pete did a test fit where it was in like uh, the gangster lean mode. Too far back. So he's moved it back up one to his happy place. So now it's time to bolt it to the floor there and uh, We'll see what Pete looks like getting that much closer to being drifts back in the M3. Let's do the honorary first fit. Oh yeah, that feels good. I am bolted in. Man, I really do love the Bray Krause rails with the ability to be able to move the seat back and forth. Not manually, look at this. I just go like this, power. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, and actually, I gotta go the opposite way, so I just gotta switch, switch the wires, wires around here. Yeah. Hook that up there, and backwards we go. Ooh, ha, yeah. Isn't that awesome? That is. Like, seriously, how cool is that? So, a really great integration of an OEM product onto an aftermarket one. I think the steering wheel is in, or I'm sorry, the seat is in. So, DP, what do you think? We move on to the steering wheel next? Let's do it. Sticking with the Momo theme here, I've got all Momo for the steering wheel and the hub, which we're gonna install in one second, but, well, I have something to show you guys. Here is the steering wheel of my choice. DP, you're gonna get a kick out of this. All right. Because it is... <laughs> Another Monte Carlo. A Monte Carlo. Wait a minute, didn't we agree that that's not a drift wheel? We did, we did, but I had uh, ordered it before our whole fiasco with the Z. So I have gone ahead and ordered a Mod 7, which is a deep dish, non-contoured steering wheel. And I think it'll be much better for drifting. However, for the time being, I am going to install this. Well, that was a pretty simple job, actually. I was expecting a lot more confusion, but I actually ended up using the wiring harness off of the OE steering wheel, which has a simplified horn setup. So all I did was that hook that up to the horn and then ground it to the actual hub. So we are good to go. So we should now have ourselves a horn. There we go. And bonus, we don't have the airbag light on. And what I did was I used a Momo supplies, those like resistors for the airbag light, which was great. So I hooked those up as well. So I think that is officially done for our steering wheel install. As I said, we're gonna be replacing this wheel with a Mod 7 that is en route to us, but I think we're good. So as I mentioned, we are gonna pull all of the rear interior here and that is to install a custom roll bar. There are some Bolton ones on the market, but what we want to do is we kind of want to spec it to our own dimensions and shape and kind of fit it the way we want. So we will be doing that at NV Auto. of the back seat out now we had a little bit of a time figuring out how to get the headrest out but it's actually pretty simple YouTube had a video that taught us how to do it which uh, is amazing isn't it what YouTube has defined so we're not sure if we want to remove these uh, factory rollover bars these actually pop up in a rollover and provide some rollover protection but we're not sure if we like the way they look and since we're gonna add in a physical roll bar they're kind of redundant so, I don't know, let us know in the comment section what you think about the look of these. Without them, it looks very smooth and, I don't know, maybe a little barren back there? So, I don't know, I kind of like the idea of leaving them in, so. Yeah, because the headrests definitely don't look good in my Yeah, opinion. without the headrests, I think it looks cleaner, looks a little more, I don't know, this racy. gives it kind of a racy look, yeah, so, I, I don't know, so. we, we might leave those in there. I think we'll remove the rear seat belts, maybe we I was want. looking at it, it's going to require a little bit too much work we'd have to take the plastic off the top so i think we'll just take them Leave it for now yeah but we'll take them off the bottom bolts and oh, then just okay. tuck them in our little cubby hole there so okay we can just hide them behind the seat and we're gonna and take we'll off be... the uh the factory yeah those we definitely don't need anymore plugs here so i'm gonna use uh, stubby bob he's a new addition to our our toolkit and i really like him even though he's uh an m12 battery which means he doesn't have as much jam as their m18 batteries he's still got a lot of power We've been able to break just about anything loose with Stubby and even it's such a compact body, I'm impressed how much power it has. So it's got three speed settings. So uh, one is the slowest, two is mid, three is the yeah, fastest. That's kind of what I really like about it. But I also think the fourth mode is super cool for tightening fasteners. It only goes to five foot pounds max. So you can use it to zap bolts in and you'll never over tighten them. So if Moose is here, we're always giving them Stubby Bob in uh, five foot pound mode because that way things can't get broken. Anyway, I'm going to put it back in the uh, most powerful mode here for breaking these loose. 
These are, by the way, a weird Torx bit. The Germans, of they are. That's the Germans love their German Torx spec. bits. So let's uh, see how we go here with Stubby. No problem. I'm telling you, man, Stubby Bob's got the jam. Our rear interior here is stripped, ready for a roll bar. That, however, will be another episode when we go to Envy Auto. So this one is almost a wrap. And by almost, I mean, what person doesn't want to add cool pedals into their drift car? I mean, the BMW ones are all plastic and got the rubber. They're just way too conventional. So of course, I had these AWE tuning pedals for, I think it's like an Audi, an A3 kicking around. Why I don't, do you have those kicking around? I don't know why, DP. Sometimes I look at my, my hoard and I'm like, holy crap, where did this come from? Yeah. I don't know. But anyways, I do have them kicking around and I thought, you know what, this is probably a good time to bolt them on. Like, I mean, look at that. Those look really I think good, those will look way better, right? Yeah. What do you think, DP? They look good. Did I add some uh, drift points into the M3 drift points, here? You added some style. They look good. I think they do look pretty good. Oh, considering they were Audi F3, uh, A3 pedals. So. Is that what they're out of? Yeah, it worked out pretty well. All right, I think that is officially a wrap on this episode. As you can see, this car is, oh, almost broke my light here. As you can see, this car is ready for a roll bar. So that is the next episode. We are headed to Envy Auto. Thank you as always for watching. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up for more M3 content. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn your notification bell on never to miss an episode on what's coming up next for our $4,000 Drift M3. Once it is grounded, the horn should theoretically work. Okay. Thanks. <laughs>